Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, with a fun, quick, and easy project for you. We're gonna make some Easter cards and we're gonna use up a bunch of leftovers. And I've had this paper for years, but it's so pretty and spring-like, I just love it. So what I'm gonna do first is select five sheets of paper to make envelopes out of, and then I can use the scraps for decorating my cards. It's one of my best tips for uh, kind of getting the most bang for your buck and using up some of those 12 by 12 pattern paper stacks that you might be hoarding because don't we all, they're just so pretty. So here's my trick. What you want to do, and a friend named Josie actually uh, told me about this on YouTube a few years ago, and I love this tip. So you measure your card from corner to corner and add one inch, and then you cut or tear your paper to a square of that size. So my card corner to corner was about eight inches, so I am making a nine by nine piece of paper here. And I'm just using my Dollar Tree uh, L square to tear it down. Look how good that works. Oh my gosh, love the Dollar Tree. Now I am putting the card on top of my paper and just folding the flaps in on each side. That's all there is to it, guys. That is like the quickest and easiest and no fuss, no muss envelope pattern, template, whatever you want to call it, there is, and it works for any size of square or rectangle envelope as long as your paper is big enough. Now, I cut the notches out on the top flap only because um, the other ones are just going to be glued down and you're not even going to see it, so it works good for me. So re-crease everything with your fingers and then just um, adhere the bottom flap up and you've got an envelope. And then when I go to mail my card, I will just glue down that top flap and it will be good as new. Look at that, isn't that pretty? Now, if it's a pattern on the outside, you will probably wanna use a white mailing label so that you can read the address really well, or you can make the envelopes inside out and then it will look like a pretty lined envelope and the outside will be white. So do it either way, it's up to you, it's your life. I'm not gonna tell you what to do, um, but my gosh, they are so pretty. I just love seeing these beautiful springy looking envelopes. Now, now the card bases, you may remember I showed you how to do jelly prints with a pretty white border. I showed you my, uh, my, my tip, what I made from the Dollar Tree. Make sure you check out that video. I posted it last week or the week before. And also I shared my limited supply jelly printing hack. So either of those videos will show you how I made those card bases. Basically they're five and a half by five and a half. I took an five and a half, I took a eight and a half by 11 cardstock, cut it down to five and a half by 11 and folded it in half. Nothing fancy there. So I'm using my leftover envelope scraps to make my decorations. I'm just adding like a strip of it down the center. Isn't that pretty? It's just, I love, I love gel printing. And um, it's so much easier if you choose your papers at like first so that you can make sure they match and then you can pick your embellishments. So I'm just gonna glue that torn strip of paper down. And yes, I used one of those tearing rulers. Do you remember those from back in the day? You could buy those rulers that had fancy edges that you tear your paper against. You know, I still have mine. I only had the deco one, but there were scallops and waves and other things too. Um, I love pull it, pulling those old supplies back in the mix. And this ribbon, oh my goodness. I think I bought this ribbon about 15 years ago at a four for a dollar sale at Joanne when they had the spools of narrows on sale. And I love the little pico edge on this ribbon, but sometimes it looks a little too prissy, but I thought for Easter, it's just perfect. Those pastel colors, that fancy edge, I think it works so well. Now, these little Beatrix Potter stamps are were from Crafter's Companion. You might be able to find them used on eBay. I don't think they make them anymore, but I just love the illustrations of Beatrix Potter. I think they're so beautiful. And I'm using Post-it Notes just to... Um, just to mask off the edge. That was like a, a shading demonstration on that one. I was showing how to cross hatch a petal, shading a petal, if you're wondering what that illustration was, uh, what that little scribble is. Um, and I'm using the post-it note to match off, mask off the edges. I used a postage edge decorative scissor to make my edges. We're, we are going in the way back machine today, guys. We are digging out all of those oldies but goodies. And then I'm using some distress ink and a blending brush just to, to add the ink on there. So it looks like we have like a faux postage stamp. Isn't that neat? I just love it when you can use old stuff and make it kind of fresh and new again. Now I'm tucking that in, seeing how I want to arrange everything here. Now we're gonna make five cards, but we are gonna pretty much do the same techniques for all of them. We're just using different stamped images. Um, but you know, the, uh, the tips, the tips, the techniques, the tricks, everything is the same. Remember the stickers I made uh, from the sticker labels, our little label stamps and our stickers? I'm using those in this card. 
I'm just basically cleaning out the cleaning out the card box. The washi tape stamps, those were so beautiful. I love getting those on projects because they're so subtle. They're translucent, so they just add a little hint, and I love this one with a bunny rabbit on it. I will try to link up the things that are current in the video description so you can find them. This was a Tim Holtz die cut. I love his floral die cuts. Generally, his stuff is um, a little dour, but the, the springy die cuts just are gorgeous. I also love his faux ancestors. They're really pretty too. Um, I definitely like my vintage to have a little bit of cheerful um, ness to it. And I'm using a sliver of scrap paper to thread my buttons so they look like threaded buttons. And there you have it. Now, if you don't want a knot in your ribbons, just tie them in a bow and they look really pretty that way too. I had some old crocheted flowers. I was in a kick and I crocheted so many flowers one year out of embroidery floss and crochet cotton. So I'm using some of those to embellish these cards too. And there you have it. Use what you have. Make some cheerful cards to send to your friends and family this Easter. I wanna thank you so much for watching today. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And as always, happy crafting. Bye-bye.